matter how hard you try, you can't stop us now. No matter how hard you try, you can't stop us now. And welcome back to Truth Radio on our third hour of our April 5th, 2011 edition. And we got Anonymous on the phone. And uh, guys, how you doing today? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I should say. Kevin Zeiss, I'm happy to be here. And it's a pleasure having you. Thank you. And it's a pleasure having these guys on. And um, the first question a lot of people want to know, um, what is Anonymous? Um, Well, Anonymous is a lot of things, and I I don't know if I'm qualified to speak for the whole. There's a vast amount of people globally that are anonymous, and uh, my understanding is of the history that uh, Anonymous has been around as long as the computer has been, wow. and that it started off on some of the um, Japanese boards long ago where there was no censorship at all, and people could write and place whatever they would like on the computer, and if you didn't like it, you just moved on to the next. And over time, that's been changed as more regulations are uh, being placed on computers and freedom of information, and Anonymous has grown from there. There's, uh, I would say, different interests that are the same thread that runs through anonymous globally is freedom of information and that we're against um, all censorship and uh, with WikiLeaks and Julian Assange anonymous uh, found a similarity um, of support supporting freedom of speech and freedom of information and since then there's been quite a bit going on uh, with H.B. Gary and the federal government and investigations into WikiLeaks and now Anonymous. Um, there was supposed to be another Anon here that could give, go, give more details about Anonymous, but that, I would say that's the basics of it. Say, there's no I'm, leader, I'm, there's no group. Right. I'm not an Anonymous member myself. I'm a, a lawyer and I run a project called ComeHomeAmerica.us, which deals with anti-war issues, and It's Our Economy.us, uh, which uh, is dealing with uh, economic issues. Um, and one of the projects that we're involved in is one called Stop the Chamber, and that's how I first ran across Anonymous. H.B. Um, Gary, which Anon- Anonymous mentioned, when H.B. Gary um, said they were going to expose Anonymous as leaders, which really didn't make much sense, they said that. Once they said that, um, anonymous, some anonymous folks attacked the H.B. Gary website. H.B. Gary is a private security contractor, and they downloaded uh, 70,000 emails from the CEO of H.B. Gary. In those emails were included uh, emails that described a plot uh, by the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Hunton and Williams, which is a, a law firm that represents major corporations uh, and lobbies for them in Washington, D.C., and three private security companies led by H.B. Gary. And um, in those emails were a series of emails describing a plot to go after groups that were critical of the Chamber of Commerce, and we had a project called Stop the Chamber, stopthechamber.org, it still exists, and uh, we were one of their targets. It was going to be a cyber attack, you know, on our websites, putting out fake documents, having fake people contact us, uh, monitoring our activities, reporting our activities, monitoring our families, all sorts of weird stuff. Oh, yeah, that, that's part of their PSYOPs program. They think they're going to scare you with their tactics. And um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Exactly. That's why, that's why I first yeah. met Anonymous. And that, that's been going on all over the world, too, with these attacks on some of the Anonymous boards, the Anonops board yep. in Russia. is it, constantly getting hit and attacked and taken down. And uh, many, well, H, one of the things that H.B. Gary did, too, was uh, Aaron Barr, he infiltrated uh, Anons Online and went into the IRC and started taking names and making a big report that he was going to turn over and sell to the FBI. Um, so... This kind of monitoring that's going that that people talk about is truly happening within Anonymous um, and others and other activists that are pro peace against the war for freedom of speech. Um, it's hard now not to be online, and that's also one of the things of being anonymous is just how to be. How can you be online? How can you have your freedom of speech? 
yeah. without the fear of, of being monitored and everything that you say or write being gathered somewhere to be used against you. Well, you got a Cal Sunstein, uh, Obama signs are already calling. Well, they've been calling to uh, try to shut down the internet because the internet is right now technically the only thing left of freedom of speech. And you got these uh, Obama signs that's calling the United Nations calling to shut down the internet. And uh, you know, thanks to people like you uh, out there plugging all over the world to put a stop to these corrupt thugs. I mean, it's it's insane. The internet, the internet really does scare them. Yeah, it does. The, the activities of WikiLeaks and Anonymous uh, and other groups that are really active that way are are really changing the, the, the debate. They're changing the information flow. They're, they're challenging the corporate media. They're really democratizing the media and creating transparency around uh, governments and private corporations. And uh, that scares them. Uh, yeah. they, they really uh, know that as people, the Americans know what's going on in their name around the world. Americans know the corruption of the banking industry, uh, that the, the signs of revolt that we're already seeing are going to grow tremendously. And so they want to shut people down. That's why I think they went after Julian Assange, uh, the editor-in-chief of the media outlet WikiLeaks. That's why Anonymous uh, came to his, his defense. And uh, we're right now in the midst of a battle. A very a critical battle in the history of mankind about information and whether or not government's going to be transparent, whether big business is going to be transparent, whether individuals will have their privacy, and whether we'll have any power in the discourse and in the information flow. And I think Anonymous and WikiLeaks are really uh, two uh, one you know two two outlets that are making a gigantic difference and pushing that agenda forward. Oh, they are. They're making a huge difference. I mean, like. Uh I've seen the WikiLeaks stuff, um, anonymous stuff all over the internet. Um, now even mainstream has no choice. They bring up them once in a while. They try to hide it their best, but you know when you push and push enough, mainstream media has no choice but to bring. But when they bring these guys up, they'll demonize you. And um, you know, what I mean, it's. That, I'm sorry. That goes on all the time. And yeah. when me mainstream media does write about anonymous, you'll see a lot of times that they call it a hacktivist group or hacker group. I mean, that's the most common term that's been used. And the reality is is that there's not that many people that are that talented or smart that know how to hack. Yeah. And there's a huge difference between hacking and doing DDoS attacks or LOIC attacks, which is basically like flooding a fax machine of just using the data line. Nobody goes into your computer and takes any data. Nobody damages your computer. It's more like an online sit-in. Just yeah. like how you would have a protest and, and go to a congressman's office and sit in their office and hold hands and sing songs and and get attention to issues or hanging a banner. It's the same thing when you go uh, online and take down uh, a website for a while that um, is unusable or that if you use a fax machine and just keep pushing redial that they can't use the fax machine. It only lasts as long as somebody's sending the that, that data uh, to that, that other line. So uh, the way that it's, it's been described in the media is that anonymous is, you know, something to be really frightened of, that we're going to go into everybody's computers and steal all their information. And even with Operation Payback, uh, again, that was just shutting them down and seeing the strength in opposition. Yeah. Nobody took any money from Visa or MasterCard or PayPal. It was just a matter that they were inoperable for a while, that they got the message that that Anonymous is a legion, a worldwide legion, yeah. and that they can't stop them. Exactly. I first met I first met Anonymy, who's speaking here, um, <coughs> Excuse me. operation called uh, Operation Anonymous. Operation Want. Oh, yeah, that was going to be my next question. I'm sorry. Uh, what is Operation Want? Sorry to steal it from you. No, I'm sorry. Um, operation, <laughs> operation Want was uh, is a think tank operation. Uh, it's an operation uh, to gather information and figure out why Sweden is uh, going after Julian Assange on these bizarre sex charges. And I was contacted by um, Operation Want because I had written a great deal about Bradley Manning. I'm on the Bradley Manning Support Network, and uh, I've also written a great deal about WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, and so I was contacted because of that, and uh, it's not an operation that's a hack operation. It's not an operation to sit in or overwhelm any websites. Nothing like that. I, I have no 
skills or involvement in that kind of activity, but I am interested in trying to get to the facts on, on various issues. And this, this, arrest, uh, this arrest of Julian Assange for questioning in a consensual sex case is just so strange on its face. I mean, yeah. Uh, Sweden is, has a very poor record of prosecuting sex charges to begin with, but they've never done an international warrant to get someone for to answer sex charges. Interpol well, has never done it before. Well, Even and to do it as a red people. list, too. Yeah. That? Not even Godel, Godel, not even Not even Paris are put on red list um, the way that they went after Assange at putting him on the red list. And That's they're... Yeah, and what, uh, I'll explain a little bit about Operation Want. What happened was <clears throat> there's several people, uh, several anons that, um, that have been WikiLeaks supporters, and we all wanted to know what is really going on with Sweden. What does the U.S. really want? And this was before it became very clear that the U.S. had already started an investigation into WikiLeaks and had also um, asked Twitter for the accounts or, or subpoenaed Twitter for the accounts of, Wiki, of known WikiLeaks um, supporters and people who used to work at WikiLeaks. So we decided let's find out. And having this whole global network of anons, we were able to find some of the best researchers and investigative reporters or writers um, in the world to come together and start pulling all of the data together. And we, we decided, let's use the research method of follow the money. That's usually where you can really find the culprit or near suspects. And we started off with just taking all of the Stockholm Sweden cables. Um, I would say there's over 50 of them. And we read them. And we did our own assessments, and we made the assessments similar to the way that uh, Daniel Ellsberg did of identifying the wants and the don't wants. What do the people want and what don't they want? And we did that between the U.S. and Sweden, um, deciphering each cable. And then after we did that, <clears throat> we rotated it through again of all the researchers and said, let's get a second pair of eyes. Are we correct on our assessments? So when this was done, then we went through and identified everything. Okay, here's a cable about uh, Gripen fighters and that Sweden wants the um, ASA radars. Now, who is Gripen? Who makes the Gripen fighters? Well, that took us to the Saab Group, and so then we invested the Saab Group. Well, who owns the Saab Group? Yeah, they're a public company, but who has the major shares? Who controls the company? And it took us to the Wallenbergs of Sweden. So we're like, well, that's interesting. Okay, we got Wallenberg here. Then there was the other about um, Sweden having an agreement with the United States to collect data on citizens, basically to spy on them and to share that data with the U.S. And the U.S. had gone to Sweden and said, we would like to make this a formal agreement, not a, not a voluntary one. And the politicians were like, hey, we can't do that because this is in violation of the Swedish Constitution. We can't really spy on our citizens. And if this got out, we wouldn't get reelected. So yeah. that was big news. And of course, these things made the U.S. and Sweden very angry at WikiLeaks. But we looked at this and said, how would Sweden spy on its citizens. How would they go about doing this? Well, Ericsson um, Telephone is owned by Investor AB. Again, yep. Wallingberg. Saab Group was Investor AB and Wallingberg. So there we got two. Then as we started looking more at Wallingberg and the other companies with um, one called a AB 